Hi everyone, welcome to Chaos Engineering 2024. My name is Indika Vimalasurya and part of my presentation I will walk you through Smart Chaos which is about leveraging generative AI to build autonomous chaos engineering workflows. During my presentation I will talk about distributed systems and mainly its importance when it comes to resilience. So why we have to make our distributed systems resilient. And then we will discuss high level what is chaos engineering and generative AI as well. Important part of my presentation is discuss about methodology of chaos engineering and then how we can apply generative AI solutions into the different aspects of or the life, the life stages of the chaos engineering workflows. We will discuss about quite a lot of use cases and I have used AWS Party Rock to implement some of these use cases as well. And then we will check how we can build an autonomous chaos engineering workflow which can act, which can learn and which can act and which can generate uh, or, or, or the chaos solutions using generative AI without human intervention. Finally, I will wrap it up with some of the best practices and pitfalls based on my experience. So moving on, I hope you all understand the distributed systems are very complex. One of the main reasons why they are very complex is we have layers of architectures, right? We have the hardware layers, it can be your serverless or the computing layer or the front end layers as well. What these layers has done is uh, in case if there is an issue in any of these layers, it will have a repel effect on other layers as well. And one other challenge is in case of a bug in one of the layer, Again, it can cause uh, different behaviors to the or impact or ripple effect to the other layers. And what we also know is bugs can appear anytime, right? It can be that you did the deployment last week, but maybe bug might appear today. So managing these complex distributed systems is a challenge because there are a lot of unknowns. And even though we think that we are knowing everything and we are on, on top of you know our uh, the development rigor, the test rigor and uh, the CICD pipelines and uh, all the automations we are bringing in, we are still tend to encounter issues and that is one of the challenge and that is something probably you will ask why, like why are we not able to make management of distributed systems easy or is it something down to the skill level? Or is it something down to the people aspect or what is it that's something probably you want to uh, find out and probably you want to answer and if you are thinking that these issues are only bound to a certain level of uh, size of the company or size of the engagement but I think you are wrong why because I am giving you a couple of examples here if you look at it by uh, during 2021 Facebook had a massive outage which impacted Instagram and WhatsApp and it outage lasted around 5 hours. This has impacted Facebook badly and not it had an impact on their stocks as well. And same year, one of the leading content delivery network, the Fastly, had an outage which lasted around 1 hour again and it had an impact on series of other applications or systems. Mainly this is down to Fastly being, being one of the leading CDN, it has been used widely across the industry. So this impacted Amazon, eBay, Reddit and Twitch, Guardian and even the New York Times and even some of the UK government websites. This was identified that there was a bug in the software and you know which was got uh, uh, moved into production and which has resulted this outage. So this again one classic example one issue impacting multiple systems and this is kind of a classic example of the complexities distributed systems are bringing and last year uh, we have seen Datadog one of the leading observability tools and it's kind of like uh, probably uh, number two in the Gardner observability magic quadrant so Datadog experienced a, a substantial outage which resulted in impacting almost like most of their customers because Datadog as a SaaS solution people are depending on their uh, the systems being up and running to enable their systems getting the alerts and the other observability related uh, work. So this is again identify that 
uh, there was a uh, route and there is a restart required. So this is again a classic example like even with companies in uh, which has money which has able to invest money on the proper tools processes and even people is not immune to outages. So you again now you will question this right why because if you are spending money if you are bringing in the right tool right people and we are building uh, the right processes then why are we uh, every day like ending up with these kind of situations and one of the key thing what you have to understand is uh, we are doing a lot of testing and you might even ask that these systems are going through a rigorous testing cycle it's it can be your uh, the developer testing it can be uh, the regression testing it can be performance testing it can be load testing it can be security testing and it once even you deploy your call to production you will do a post deployment testing so there are a lot of testing happening in these systems and even with this testing and we have using lot of uh, tools and automations to uh, improve our testing capability why are we still encountering major issues and one of the answer is we are only testing what we know so ex example if i take example if a customer gives a requirement developer go through the requirement probably can and and the developer and the business analyst is converted to the stories and then these stories developers will start building parallelly the qa team the quality assurance team will go through these requirements as well and they will come up with their test cases and this is a very important point to remember so when the qa team is coming up with their the test cases what they are doing is they are referring to that the requirements and they are putting their thought and they are coming up with those test cases so what we have to understand is the qa team is coming up with what they know right so we are good at testing what we know so that is one of the main thing and most of the time when we are coming up with issues what we have seen is it's the unknowns distributed system because they are very complex and because it's like vast and it's it's difficult to manage there are a lot of unknowns and these unknowns are getting missed out when we are doing uh, testing because we test what we are what is known to us so this resulted in these issues getting creep into our production systems regularly and this is one of the challenge and this is a challenge where we are planning to address using chaos engineering so if you look at chaos engineering chaos engineering is pretty much trying to understand what are the unknowns right as i said when our quality assurance teams going and doing testing they are only doing testing on knowns what is known to them but assuming a distributed system deployed in a, uh, a data center right i we thinking of like someone in the data center pulling a cable or someone is switching off the machine accidentally or some router is you know falling and which is resulted in traffic is getting failed so those are the scenarios usually are not been conscious or covered part of the our typical the quality assurance testing and one of the main reason is there's lot of unknown here so why chaos engineering is we want to develop a mechanism where we can test unknown so this is nothing new chaos engineering is here in industry for some time now so this was pioneered by netflix especially when they are moving out uh, they are on premise to the the cloud they developed this uh, the chaos monkey which is used to go and do some chaos in their production environment so this allowed them to understand what are the issues and what are the reliability issues and the resilience issues in their system so that they were able to develop a world class streaming media platform so one of the reason chaos engineering is very important is it is able to test your resilience and it is able to do sometimes some things which you are not even thinking so that is the advantage so chaos engineering is allowing us to improve our reliability and build our systems uh, with resilience in mind and it's allowing us to achieve our service level objectives and even it's allowing us to achieve our mean time to resolve and other targets so this is a very important for any of the distributed system to look at chaos engineering seriously so with this i'll park the topic of chaos engineering for a moment and let's move into generative ai so i'm probably sure you all are aware of generative ai 
with the hype of chat gpt now everyone is aware of generative ai and everyone is using generative ai so generative ai is nothing but the ability of ai models to create new content or create original content by looking at the large amount of data these large language models are able to come up with innovative solutions when comes to creating new content it can be either images or the videos or it can be in any media form so some of these models are really helping us to uh, make a difference in our operations or how we work or how we approach our day of life work so if you look at applications of generative ai as i said one of the top use cases is text the text generation so it's not just a chatbot or just a uh, uh, just a standard bot which you which you can communicate so the same text generation concept you can apply into your coding and you can apply into uh, the writing you can apply it into uh, the production support you can apply to manage knowledge bases so the opportunities are endless as good as your imagination it has the capability of image generation as well and video generation and so many other things so this is helping us to come up with the new innovative solutions for some of the problems or the challenges we have and again coming back to chaos engineering so even though we say chaos we want to do chaos engineering in a methodical way so there is nothing like you know doing a chaos engineering a chaos way and that will not give you any value so what we want to do is come up with a proper methodology which will allow you to develop your workflows and then come up with the proper chaos engineering mechanism and even though netflix is been pioneered and they are able to do this in production environment we currently suggest you started in your non production environments and then expand it later so what are the key steps of chaos engineering so the first task is i discover discover your services what are the components of your application where your application is deployed and what are the dependencies upstreams and downstreams those are very important because those are the places where we things can go wrong so discovering your service is very important then you have to understand your steady state steady state is nothing but what is good mean for you it can be uh, uh, like example if it is a uh, web application it's about application has to be up and running application has to serve customer request within a certain time so that is what goods mean for you so every system we have to understand what is the steady state and that will allow us to understand and ensure that we have a one identification when we say good so good can't be based on different people's opinion it has to be something which is written and something which is acceptable to everyone and then we will build our hypothesis what are the failure scenarios for this application and the hypothesis will help us to come up with experiments and then uh, to run them and when we are running we will verify and we will do a improve and continuous improvement of this cycle and we are obviously able to integrate this with ci cd pipelines but it, this is at the moment happening manually and one important thing you have to be remember is when you are following this process you have to have a uh, ability to measure everything there's no point you do chaos engineering or chaos testing but you are not looking at how your systems are behaving i am sure you have heard of this term called wisdom of production it's about getting the knowledge of how your systems are running in production or production environments or even Uh, some environments which are identical production remember i said you are not supposed to or encouraged to do chaos engineering testing in production but what you can do is you can build a identical environment and you can do where you can get this the experience and the knowledge so key things is parallel to your chaos testing you have to have your observability in place so observability is looking at the external outputs trying to define the internal state of your system so that is very important when the chaos is happening you want to know how your systems are behaving and then you have to have your slos defined 
and they are in place so that you will be able to understand when these chaos testings are run what is the impact on your service level objectives and that is directly correlated with what is impact on your customer experience so at this moment we are not probably have the ability to understand what is customers feeling but we have some service level objectives which are very aligned to customer experience so this is allowing us to understand how this is impacting to our customers and finally you can uh, look at uh, uh, the latency traffic error and saturation so combination of all of this will allow you to measure everything so this is very important when you are going through the chaos engineering process you have to measure everything otherwise that is a waste of time so now let's look at part of each different stage of chaos engineering how we can bring generative ai so that is the key so at here i am looking at 10 stages 10 step into the chaos engineering workflow and we'll try to go and see how we can actually leverage a generative ai uh, to provide solutions to this area so one is discovery so we are able like the traditional way is people will use uh, a manual approach or uh, something very close to manual to discover things but we have the option like we have the sometimes the observability tools and our apms application performance supporting tools where it can create service maps but that again will help us to do discovery but sometimes you know most of the time this is some happening in manually and dependency identification so this is again something you know which is currently happening manually and we are able to bringing in generative ai solutions which we will look at in future and steady state defined so steady state defined is you are looking at your architecture the services and everything and you are defining what is good mean to you so this is at the moment pretty much happening manually and this is something again you can leverage generative ai solutions hypothesis is nothing but your failure scenarios and this is again at the moment what's happening is a team of uh, your entire team will start looking at your the services the architecture diagrams system dependencies bottlenecks and probable causes and then come up with this uh, the failure scenarios or the hypothesis but then again there's a human intervention re re required and you all understand if there's a human intervention means there's always humans will do what is known so we are missing out the unknowns so that is area where again we can leverage generative ai and experiment design again something which is happening manually or we can do it in a partial automation but with this generative ai we are able to full fledge automate this like we can full fledged use generative ai and its content creation capabilities and to come up with these experiments and once you have the experiments you will have to understand the blast radius i mean once you come up with the chaos engineering test you will not go and just execute it you want to understand what is the impact it's going to cause up front right so that we call uh, blast radius so once you are doing that experiment you can understand your blast radius is correct or whether it was less or whether it had a wider impact that is again a learning so understanding blast radius which is usually happening in a manual way where you can leverage generative ai solutions to do it in a automated fashion and there is something called rumsfeld matrix which is about known knowns known unknowns and unknown knowns so which we will cover in a subsequent slide here's again uh, about uh, coming up with a hypothesis for known knowns what you know in your area likewise so this is again a place where we can use gen ai and then about monitoring and analysis you know we can plug our gen ai solutions with observability tools and then you know we can bring in that the capabilities large language model is bringing to the table and we can leverage that documentation and reporting is something a bread and butter for generative ai because it's kind of like you know what is supposed to do or the basics and then obviously we can go through this in an iterative way we can share all the learnings the observability data service level objective data and other uh, the latency traffic saturation and error rates and all those uh, for golden signal data and feed them into generative ai where it can uh, come up with the holistic approach and to improve your systems or the workflows of chaos engineering so moving on now i will go to each the stages which we have discussed 
and discuss about how we can leverage generative AI. For this, I am at the moment using one of the architecture diagram. So, this architecture diagrams I have pulled it up from Amazon.com website, one of their case studies. So, probably, you know, one class you might have an understanding of what this architecture diagram, or probably it will take a little bit of time for you. And the idea is that that is what why we need generative AI. So, we don't need really SMEs to be involved all the time. So, this is an architecture diagram of an electronic vehicle charging system. So, it's, a, it's, a, it's hosted in AWS. It has components like Route 53. You have your network load balancer. It's using Fargate and it's using uh, some of the IoT components. And it has Lambda, SQS, Step Functions. And it has the Aetna, DynamoDB, S3 and other the visualization tools as well. So, this is again a very comprehensive, uh, prob uh, probably a uh, highly complex uh, distributed system. And what we are going to do is we are going to use this as our base and see how we can automate some of the stage just which I, I discussed earlier. So, moving on, one of our first task is can we identify the dependencies? Here what I am doing is, so all those examples I have tested using AWS Party Rock. AWS Party Rock is one of uh, uh, like innovative, uh, the AI playpen which AWS has released. So if you are aware, AWS has the search maker which is about hardware of you know de deploying and you know managing your AI models. And then you have Bedrock where it's API based so that you know it's more of a serverless kind of experience. And Party Rock is where you kind of like you know plug and play and you start using models so if you want you know go to aws party rock where you can experiment and create all those things which i am discussing here so here what i have done i used that architecture diagram i shown you earlier i created a small app where i have given the architecture diagram and then asked generative ai to come up with system dependencies as you can see it says based on the architecture diagram here are some of the key dependencies. So, it's identifying EV charging station, OCPP protocol handler, uh, charging station management system, payment provider, notification component, telemetry indexation, billing system, authentication as the key system dependencies. So, this is good. Without us looking at this, without a someone from the team or the SME looking at this, Generative AI just by looking at architecture diagram, it's able to derive this. So what you have to understand is this is not just image reading. So this is about just image reading, then understand those components using the, the massive amount of learning or the data it's have makes a story which makes sense. So that is the beauty of large language models. So here it's able to easily come up with the dependency list. So, here is example like when you are coming up with a dependency list, like you know you can change the model types. Now, here if I am not mistaken, I am uh, using uh, uh, the model called command. So, here my output is uh, more accurate, right or I would say it is uh, kind of like uh, uh, very clear compared to the previous one. So, it is a pro tip. So, if you are using large language model, like ensure that you are using the right model and that will give you more accurate data. So, moving on, next aspect is understanding the steady state of this application or the system. Here again, I am using Party Rock. I have given the architecture diagram link and then I have asked to come up with the steady state definition. So, what the Party Rock or the large language model is producing is it is providing the steady state definitions. So, it is saying API gateway. The API gateway is available and return the correct response code, 200 code when OICP requests are sent to API. And likewise, it is able to list all the steady state definitions. Example, payment gateway, it says the payment gateway is available and successfully processing payment for charging sessions. So, this is the steady state. So, our generative AI is able to look at the architecture diagram and then define what is good mean without even humans involved. So, moving on, this is about hypothesis creation. So, creation of what are the failure scenarios. Again, what I am doing, I have, in, I have given the architecture diagram link and I have asked generative AI model to generate the hypothesis. So, it is able to come up with a meaningful 
and relevant accurate uh, hypothesis so one first one it says if the OCPP handle goes down electric vehicle charging station will not be able to start stop charging sessions leading to inability to charge the vehicles so likewise if the billing system goes down new charging sessions cannot be started as authorization and payments cannot be processed so it's coming up with the failure scenarios and also potential impact so as you see here again i am simply giving generative ai the architecture diagram and asking it to come up with this hypothesis but probably you might already uh, understood it now i can improve this massively not only architecture diagram i can give uh, the observability data i can give the other services i can give a live service map taken from a uh, observability tool and i can give a lot of data so that generative ai can improve its answers and then experiment design so again uh, as i discussed i am giving the architecture diagram i am just asking generative ai to come up with the experiments so if you can see it's able to come up with hypothesis and steady state and even list the test case so here it says test case simulate a failure of OCPP handle by powering off the server or disrupting the network connection to the OCPP handler. Observe the behavior of system and impact on EV charging process. So again another uh, test case. Simulate a database disruption by stopping the database service or corrupting the database files. Observe if the charging stations can continue charging and if the charging sessions data is accurately recorded and updated. Likewise, I mentioned to you, so Generative AI is able to smartly come up with these experiments. So this is again helping us massively to cut down human involvement. And moving on, once you have the experiments, it's about understanding blast radius. I mentioned to you when you are executing your chaos testing or experiments, you have to understand or have some understanding of the impact. So here again what I am doing, I am giving the architecture diagram so that a generative AI can have a big picture and then I am giving a test case, then I am asking it to come up with the blast radius. So here it says, you know, this is a blast radius for the test case. So here we know it's going to impact o OCPP handler, EV charging state, backend services and users. So this is massively advantage. So generative AI without even us involving able to come up with this kind of data. And as I said, now if you remember, I used architecture diagram to get all this data. And probably you might think architecture diagrams are sometimes outdated. And can we improve this? Of course, we can, this is an example of a very simple uh, application where uh, service mass, map was generated by CloudWatch X-Ray where once the application is being used so I know the client is there API gates microservices my databases so I can just feed in this diagram so then even that uh, with the architecture diagram so that generative AI solution can compare what is in the architecture diagram and what are the services it in live or operations or in whatever the environments you have deployed this so this will allow it to so the more data more accurate data more information we are feeding into the chaos engineering or the generative ai tool which is going to do this this will allow it to come up with more accurate answers so next so we discuss we quickly touch about this rumsfield metrics so this is about known known so when you say known known it's about evaluating components of your system that are familiar and thoroughly understood such as system architecture infrastructure identified failure points cicd test and then we have the known unknowns and this is about investigating potential issues and vulnerabilities in your system that are known but haven't undergone rigorous testing or validation such as theoretical vulnerabilities or un verified failure scenarios so that is again a known unknown and then we have the unknown knowns reviewing issues that are uh, considered but may have been forgotten or overlooked with passing of time such as adherent to best practices documented procedures or insights from historical incidents so this is known as known unknowns known unknown knowns and finally it's about unknown unknowns Conducting comprehensive chaos testing to discover, foresee and anticipated vulnerabilities that may emerge unexpectedly leading to surprise or often unpleasant nature. 
so rums will feel just gives kind of a, a approach where you can plan your chaos testing or we are when you are coming up so what we can do is we can feed this data or approach or the framework of Ramsfield metrics into our generative AI here what I am doing is I have given the architecture diagram so I am just saying come up with a known known or I could have improved this thing by looking at this come up with test cases or hypothesis to map to known known and moving on I was able to do the same thing for known unknown as well so I am sure now you have that understood we are able to use uh, generative AI every aspects of our chaos engineering workflow we are able to use generative AI to discover our services we can able to use it to understand the dependencies we are able to use it to define steady state we are able to use it to come up with our hypothesis we are able to use it to come up with our uh, test cases or the experiments and then we are able to use it to come up with uh, what do you call uh, after test cases the blast radius so th those are love so that those are the ingredients or the pieces of our chaos engineering workflow so if you are looking at a typical CICD pipeline you know you have the developers coding and committing code you will build it and you will deploy it for testing and probably you know you will do the deploy as well and then you are have the observability tools you know which uh, if you are using AWS you can leverage cloud.matrix cloud.logs or x-rays and here we can plug our chaos engineering pipeline to here as well so what this does is part of this pipeline our chaos engineering pipeline can get invoked and then it will start triggering a workflow so what this workflow is so this is what i call the smart chaos this is about you know autonomous chaos engineering so what we are doing is first our generative AI will have access to the training data set this about your architecture diagram this about your service maps this about observability data this about you know all the inputs which we can give it to generative AI to come up with the proper solution then it's able to come up uh, come up with uh, uh, create the uh, I mean it will obviously come up with the uh, defined steady state it's able to come up understand the dependencies and it will come up with a hypothesis and then based on that it will try to come up with some experiments so what we want is when we are creating experiments we want to create a templates a small experiment templates so that we can make it as a collection and reuse so that is probably we can give already uh, some of the templates like api failures or instance termination or system resource uh, uh, filling up and those things as exam the templates so that this uh, workflow can use then uh, this workflow can you know create these experiments and then start you know executing it and then once uh, the execute ex ex the experiments have been executed we are able to monitor using our observability tools like you know we are able to monitor the observability data or the telemetry data and it we will start monitoring our service level objectives and our the traffic saturation error and other things so that is again will give uh, more data points to uh, the this workflow so what we have to do is we'll come up with a small blast radius and we'll ask the, the generative AI to use a small blast radi radius and then increase it in subsequent runs. So this is more of a very automated workflow where we are leveraging what I mentioned to you right each stage I have shown you how we can use uh, generative AI and now we are bringing it all together to come up with a proper workflow. And if you look at it, how this can be actually look at in a actual production environments or a typical other environment. So you will have your DevOps and SREs, you know, which are doing your changes. They will, you know, ship these changes using CI/CD pipeline, which will go and deploy into your different environments. And parallelly that we can trigger your smart chaos. And smart chaos is also integrated with observability, service level objectives, error budgets. And what smart chaos will do is it will try to pull up the observability tool and get the actual uh, the service uh, the service maps and then it can refer the knowledge it's having about the architecture diagrams and all the other diagrams the logs and the metrics and tracers and everything based on that you know it will try to come up with what are the steady steady states what are the dependencies it will come up with hypothesis and it will design experiments and based on after design experiments it will look at a library of 
templates which we call experiment templates and then you know combine those templates scripts it can create a, the actual chaos workflows and then it will start pushing this into the relevant environments to run while doing that it can start monitoring it and look at that op the telemetry data and improve right obviously it will look at you know create controlling the blast radius and then increasing in subsequent runs so this is happening fully autonomous where we don't have to spend time we don't have to uh, get our people's involved we can let the generative ai learn about our application setup and everything and then build smart chaos uh, or the chaos engineering auto automations for us this i like to call autonomous chaos workflows so with this before i wrap up so if you are seriously trying to get into this i have a couple of best practices you have to consider one thing is as like any other generative solutions this smart chaos is depend on providing good quality data to our generative ai models if you not if you provide unclean data or data which might not uh, be relevant then your model will struggle and then uh, one of the best practices have a big template library ready with some of the template the small subunit of experiments so this will allow our workflows to quickly use these templates bundle it up and create a one template and other thing is that you know let the smart chaos expand gradually don't go into in a big bang way i mean that is always not the good the best or advisable thing let's do it in a more of a ex the control and a, a way that we can expand and one other thing is have the feedback loop right you can introduce some of these feedback loops so that generative ai can provide notifications and all those insights and runtime you can look at how things are happening and then also based on that you can fine tune some of these uh, workflows as well and what are the pitfalls look at it so one of the big pitfall is when you are looking at generative ai it's uh, sometimes we have seen there's a data bias so we you have to ensure that when you are providing this data so uh, the model will not go into a data bias situation so here when i say data bias so example it's about balancing the flaws right so it can identify some of the critical workflows and non critical workflows so what we don't know want the model to be is biased to the critical workflow where it will go and only look at the critical workflows but then you know we we want to have some kind of a, a good cover of non critical workflows as well and then we want the model the this approach to expand in a control fashion not avoid rapid chaos expansion because you know that that is not a uh, accept that is not a recommended thing and we want uh, it to feed all the observable telemetry data and everything so that experiments uh, monitoring measuring everything can be comprehensive and then it can learn and iterate in a nice fashion and finally what i want to tell you is even though this is a very good approach and i'm pretty sure we are going to see this in happening real time there is still there's a need of human expertise don't eliminate your human completely still you know roping him in start looking at the areas try to look at the bigger picture look at things from holistically and then try to see how we can improve this in a holistic way with this i'm i'd like to finish my session it was wonderful being part of uh, chaos engineering 2024 i hope you enjoy my presentation and there are a lot of other presentations please go and check them as well and i'm very much happy if you are still in and if you are listening i'm privileged to be part of this and i'm wishing and hoping that you know you have learned something which you can go back and used in your day to day work with that this is nice doing this presentation thank you very much have a nice day